Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode, and I've got a fantastic coach for you today, Emily Guerrera, and she is going to be talking all about mindset, coaching, work-life balance for entrepreneurs, and um, for a lot of the audience are female entrepreneurs, so um, if this is of interest, uh, you know, pay, uh, stay tuned for the um, episode, and I'm happy to welcome Emily to the show. Welcome, Emily. Thank you so much. I am so excited to be here. Yeah. So, um, and I know we got connected through Podmatch and mm-hmm. kind of set the stage really briefly how you got to where you to where you are, what you do, and um, how you can help the audience. Yeah, for sure. So, just like a brief overview <laughs> of who I am, what I do. I am a certified productivity life coach. So I work on empowering self-employed women and overcoming different mindset hurdles, as well as optimizing systems, habits, routines, and tools. So that way they can not just boost productivity, but actually live out that work from home lifestyle of their dreams. So getting to this point was actually a very windy road. Honestly, COVID played a big part in my journey. I unfortunately lost both of my jobs and had to pivot in 2020 when the lockdown was fresh and happening. And because of this time period, I was like wondering, what do I do with my life? Like, do I try to stick with the jobs that I had and wait for lockdown to end? Or do I like pivot and actually start earning some money again and start living life again? And so I decided to pivot and I started freelancing out social media services just to make some money. And I ended up working with a lot of different entrepreneurs. And I started noticing a lot of themes in all of our lives. And the biggest one was a lack of work-life balance and a lack of understanding priorities and creating systems and tools and habits to hit those priorities. And so I naturally started coaching my freelancing clients. And then that turned into an actual coaching business, which is where I'm at today. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I can remember March 2020, and I was like, I'm not waiting. You know, you can't, the government's so unreliable. And, you know, just kind of pivot, just go. And then, um, you know, I know a lot of people that just went for it and they're doing yep. so much better than where they were before. Oh, totally. <laughs> no, I mean, I look back and I am so thankful that I pivoted because I'm like, what I have now is actually a lot better than what I would have had if I stuck with what I was doing. So that just goes to show that sure, it may feel like crap in the moment, but <laughs> it's for a reason. Yeah. One thing that I really love is because you're a mindset coach. And um, so a lot of, um, you know, I've been talking to a lot of uh, guests on the podcast and, you know, a lot of them do what you do. They're really um, to help people that really want to make an impact they want to reach their full potential they want to make a difference but you know um a lot of people you know that come from this place they had some um trauma or you know um they suffer from guilt shame low self self self-esteem imposter syndrome so how do you help clients get unstuck from these um past traumas and um and move forward and actually step into their into their uh full potential Such a great question because I feel like that's kind of all of us, right? (laughs) Like there's always some sort of trauma or some sort of mindset hurdle that is holding us back. And I've definitely had my fair share of hurdles that have held (laughs) me back. And it's part of the coaching process that I genuinely love to do because there's always this shift that I see in my clients once they kind of understand like, oh, this is just a story. This is just my experiences, my past experiences and my life kind of being meshed together to help me make sense of my world around me. But it's just a story. It's not a fact. It's not the truth unless I make it the truth. So I love diving into like the thought and belief formation process and actually understand why we're thinking this way, why we're feeling this way. And let's break that down scientifically. So that way you see it's actually something you have power over. And it's something you can control. And here's how to do that. So that's always one of the first things that I love to do with my clients. And then particularly with imposter syndrome, self-doubt, it's really all about self-empowerment and building in those habits and that self-talk 
to empower yourself on a consistent daily basis, not just when you're feeling down, but also when you're feeling good and like keeping that going and bringing it into your daily habits. So those are two things that I find incredibly effective and can be done in a lot of different ways. And the way you do it really should depend on you and how you know you perceive affirmations and how you enjoy doing certain types of change and all that kind of stuff. So I really do love making it customized, of course, but starting with that base and that foundation is a great place to start. Yeah, I love that. And um, so kind of uh, piggybacking off of your, um, you know, uh, what are some strategies? Because you mentioned, um, you know, kind of affirmations, but how do you shift from negative self-sabotaging mindset to more positive empowering one is it like um you know cold showers or sprints or share some strategies for sure so i think the biggest strategy which is arguably the toughest strategy is boosting our awareness and just realizing when you are saying a story or a self-learning belief that is preventing you from being your most productive self and actually catching yourself in that moment not afterwards but when it's happening that piece right there is arguably the most transformative piece that you can do because i always say awareness is power once you understand something you can then work to change it so that is always where i would love to start everybody off and then affirmations like i mentioned before are such a great way to just start shifting your self-talk and to give yourself replacement statements for self-limiting beliefs so let's say like you are having a self-learning belief all about imposter syndrome and self-doubt, and you do not think that you can do X, Y, Z. You can literally write down, I am capable. I can do X, Y, Z. And it sounds silly, right? But I think making it silly is what we need because our life can be so serious all of the time. And we need to sometimes just smile and take ourselves out of that negative headspace. And doing an affirmation that feels a little silly sometimes is the best way to do that. Also journaling and understanding why you are feeling this way and writing it out activates different parts of your brain. So you process things a little bit differently than if you were just thinking about it and ruminating in your head. So getting it out on paper is a really wonderful way to boost your awareness, to process what's happening, but then to also figure out how you want to move forward. Yeah, I love that. I really love um, those strategies and kind of there's a good saying, awareness, um, shifting awareness, then uh, basically energizes and then um, intention transforms. So yes. um, kind of like you want to, you kind of see where your thoughts and your feelings are so they can kind of yeah. gauge and then move from there. So exactly. You can't change what you don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that. And kind of, uh, you know, moving on is, um, because you talk about uh, productivity, time management, uh, goal setting. Um, what, uh, you know, a lot of people say, you know, time management is crucial. So share your favorite strategies and how can they help in setting personal professional goals? Such a needed topic, right? Because we all, I feel like we all always say like, I just wish I had more time. I just need a little bit more time. I just need to figure it out just a little bit longer. And like, let's get rid of that notion that we need more time because maybe it's more about our energy. Maybe we just need a little bit more energy to get through some tasks, right? So a big part of time management that I think is kind of like the missing piece to the puzzle for a lot of people is energy management and aligning your schedule with your energy fluctuations and patterns throughout not just the day, but also the week. And so understanding when you are the most energized and planning your tasks, your toughest tasks to do when you're most energized is honestly one of the most effective time management hacks, because if you feel energized, you're going to be productive. It's just a great way to help yourself in that instance. So another couple tricks that I love to practice and I always encourage my clients to practice is one is the Pomodoro technique. So if you're not sure what that is, it's working for 25 minutes and then taking a five minute break, working for 25 minutes, taking a five minute break, 25 minutes, a five minute break, 25 minutes, and then a 15 to 30 minute break. So it's a great way to optimize your brain power. Basically, that's why you would want to do the, the Pomodoro technique. 
And it also ensures that you take breaks because <laughs> taking breaks is so incredibly important for our energy. And it brings me back to that energy management piece. If we are not managing our energy, it's going to be really challenging to manage our time. Yeah. Yeah. I really love that. And um, especially um, like later in the day and you kind of want to get something done, but your energy is low, just like kind of like a 15 minute, you know, cat nap or um, just kind Absolutely. of um, like a walk. And then that kind of yes. engages you. So. Yeah. Take a, take a step away from the screens. Honestly, <laughs> that's like when you feel yourself dipping that three o'clock slump, I personally get that a lot. I always have to go outside and take a 30 minute walk. It's part of my afternoon routine. And it's a great way to take away, take a break from screens because the screens really stimulate your brain and you aren't actually taking a break if you're on your phone scrolling, for instance. So like letting yourself put the computer and phone away just for a couple of minutes will help you more than you think. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, you know, we're kind of halfway through and, um, you know, we, I think the audience kind of gets a good flavor of, you know, how you help them. So you have two programs. One is productivity and second is accountable mindset. Talk about that and what those are and, and kind of some success stories for the, for the, um, previous clients and for of course. So my, I have two, like you said, I have two main coaching programs. One of them is all about productivity. So it's strictly focused on like boosting your productivity tools, systems, routines, and habits. So that way you can live a productive, routine, balanced life. That's really what this program is all about. And that looks different for everybody, right? So it's really a customized program. That's what I love about all of my coaching programs is I make them very, very, very tailored to your specific needs because that's what productivity is all about. And so with the monthly package that I have for my productivity coaching program, we will do one month of hourly sessions that dive into whatever goal it is that you have. And then we'll reassess how we are at the end of the month, see if we need to renew or not. So that's the productivity package. Um, to give you an example of the kinds of things that people come to me with for that specific package, I just helped a client completely optimize her Notion account because she really wanted to use Notion for her team, for herself. She had no idea how to use it. And so I helped her create all these systems, automations, tools, and a structure with her team. So that way they know how to collaborate together very easily. So that's just one example. Um, and then my accountable mindset program, I find to be the most fun program, maybe because it's a lot, lo a bit more long-term and is six months long. And this program is all about boosting your personal accountability to yourself. So as self-employed people, we can be super accountable to other people, to our business, but then we let our own self-care, our own personal goals fall to the wayside. And so this program is really about how to get both, how to hit your work goals, but also hit your personal goals and stay accountable to yourself. So we focus a lot on mindset for the first half of the program. And then it's a lot about action planning and action oriented tasks and items and movement is really the second half. And I bring in text messages. So I'm your accountability buddy the entire time we are texting back and forth. I'm sharing resources, tips, tailored tools, the whole shebang. So that way you feel like you're not alone. Because I think that is a really big piece, this isolation piece that for self-employed people, we can really struggle with. So eliminate that and help you actually hit your goals in a balanced way is really what I'm all about. Yeah. I, I really like that. And can, um, what, uh, like you have, sorry, what, uh, client testimonials or any, uh, thank you. I totally story? forgot about that piece. It's probably <laughs> the most important piece. Um, oh my gosh, actually I was just texting a client this morning and she was just telling me how when we first started coaching, she had this vision because she is starting her own business and she still has a nine to five. And so she has this vision of leaving her nine to five and only working with her own business and growing that. Right. And so we created a vision on what she wants her life to look like. And she texted me this morning and she said that she's actually seeing her vision come to life. And she didn't know if she would ever get here, but she has gotten here and she's able to leave her nine to five. And she is really starting to make some good, consistent money with her job, but she's also feeling happier and more fulfilled. And that I think is so important because we can make money, but 
are we fulfilled? You know? And so to have that full holistic approach and having, seeing her hit her vision is really, really cool and really fun. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, the other question uh, is, uh, the importance you talk about the importance of rituals in your clients and, uh, you know, a lot of, um, you know, the majority, like 95% of, um, guests are talking about their morning rituals, but, uh, very little attention is placed on, um, end of the day, uh, shutdown rituals. So talk about that or, um, you know, what you do. Um, I'm just really curious. Oh, you're speaking my language. I love this. <laughs> I think a workday shutdown ritual is arguably the most important ritual. So we all kind of know what a ritual is, right? Like we think about our morning routine, like you said, like brushing your teeth, taking a shower, maybe working out, going for a walk, like the things that you do to prepare yourself for the morning, for the next part of the day. And so with a workday shutdown ritual, it's all about closing work for the day and preparing for a personal evening away from work. And so that really is what helps you with work-life balance, right? Because I think it's so often we can say that we're done with work, but then we get an email and we bring out our phone and we start replying to it, or we have an idea. And so we go back to our desk and start taking some notes and like, we're never fully disconnected. And so helping yourself actually disconnect and say goodnight to work for the evening is how you can actually start to enjoy your evenings and not make them about work, but make them about your personal hobbies. And so what I do for my workday shutdown ritual is I will uh, reflect on my day and journal about my daily wins. And usually that takes me like a minute to two minutes. It does not have to be anything long or fancy. I really want to underscore that. <laughs> um, and then I will outline my tasks for tomorrow, outline my time blocked schedule, and then I will turn off all of my, I'm trying to think in my head, like, what is my next step? And then I will turn off all of the lights, close in my um, office chair, close my computer and like literally say goodnight to work. And then I leave my home office and I walk away from it. So it signals to my brain, okay, I'm done. And then when you can routinize that and do that every single work, I'm close about like, ending work for the day and helping yourself shift into that personal time. Yeah. I really love that. And it reminds me of, um, cause Ariana Huffington, she talked about in her book, the sleep revolution. And she was talking about how she, <laughs> she has like a, um, kind of like a, uh, sleeping bag for her, um, iPhone and she keeps yeah. it in another one. And basically she turns the, the, um, temperature down really really cold and then she's like mm -hmm. a, like a, you know eye mask and you know head and just kind of and just you know sleep's so important um yeah how can how can people uh contact you and you know uh, you know the the audience loves your energy and um find out more about you the work that you do you know uh work with you yeah, of course. So you can find me at theproductivityflow.com. I'm also at the productivity flow on Instagram, LinkedIn, and TikTok. Yeah. And I love that. And for all the audience, let's thank Emily for coming on and give her socials a like and follow and reach out to her uh, for coaching or check out her programs. And thanks so much for coming on. Thank you so much. I love this conversation.